so he walked him down through the crowd and into the stadium. This is the same fellow who said he was trying to defuse Nebraska Week. ABC Sports College Football presents CFA football from the Big 8 Conference. The number two Nebraska Cornhuskers and the number seven Colorado Buffalo. Well, from one Buffalo to another, right? I'm sure most of you are aware of all of the travail that has followed the championship season at the University of Nebraska. But today, the Cornhuskers have come to Boulder, Colorado, and you've turned your television set on to see them play the Colorado Buffaloes. I'm sure you're also aware of all of the trouble that has been swirling around suspended running back Lawrence Phillips and all of the crises that seem to hang on to his shoulders. Well, he is not here today. He is not part of the story today. The game is the story. And it's a very meaningful game as we turn to Bob Greasy for some talk about the X's and O's that could bring us a real shootout. Well, two of the top offenses in the country, and they get there in different ways. Nebraska brings in the number one rushing offense in the country. They run a lot of option. And Tommy Frazier, the quarterback, is playing as well as he ever has. On the other side, for uh, Colorado, they do it through the air. John Hessler needs a big game for Colorado to have a chance. I don't know that I've ever seen Nebraska really outmanned, but I have seen times when you could outrun them. Well, and Colorado has the receivers to do that. They'll, they'll get the fast receivers. They've got a lot of them with a lot of talent. If uh, they win today, it's because of their wide receivers' big plays. Spread them out, use all the field, and let it rip. Divide and conquer, that's their chance. There's a lot at stake in this <laughs> ball game today. So it's Colorado and Nebraska ready to go down below. Lynn Swan will be along in a few minutes, but right now we want to join John Saunders. Thanks a lot, guys, and we'll be covering other regional... His first season as a head coach, only 34 years of age, Tom Osborne on the right. He's 18-3-1 against Colorado. The Big 8 Conference standings, it is not unusual to see Nebraska up there. It is unusual to see Kansas up there, but Kansas is losing 27-7 to Kansas State this afternoon. Colorado could take a big step for their future in this game today. But they are facing Nebraska. The Huskers kick it off. It's Herschel Crockman at the three. Outside to the 15, out of bounds, from there they will start. John Hessler will come in today, the youngster who had to come on as a sophomore in relief of Coy Detmer when Detmer went down with a knee injury. You can see his numbers, not bad, nine touchdowns as a backup. The Chile starting lineup with the Colorado backs and receivers of these. The man that uh, Rick Neuheisel said they would ride today, Wide receiver, Ray Carruth, one of the fastest in the stadium and in the country. Nebraska plays a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, so he should get a lot of opportunities. So here is Hessler stepping under center, and a good one, Stoltenberg. Hessler needs to have a big day. No backs remaining. Their throw on the first down, throw it down the middle, and he threw it right to Krautman, and Krautman is back in his case. That's the linebacker, Terrell Farley, was on his back, but no flag. The offensive front for Colorado is led by number 64, Brian Stoltenberg, 280-pounder. They run at about 285 across the front. It's a good offensive line. The middle, in particular, the weakest points would be at the tackle position, mainly because of experience. It is second down and 10 from the 15-yard line for Colorado. One little option here, pitch it out to Troutman, gets to the 20, knocked out of bounds at the 21 by Terrell Farley, who last week in his first start was a holy terror, number 43. Defensively for the Buffaloes, you saw the down guys, and the, uh, for Nebraska rather, and you, you see Tomich and Wistrom, they are good, but Farley is the man. He flies all over the place. He came out of 
junior college and is now starting. He has two interceptions for touchdowns this year and already has two punts that he blocked. So he has something to watch. Big plays and uh, follow him. And those two defensive ends are also something to watch. On third down and uh, four, the pass is down the middle of the field. It is caught by Peru. Lost his footing and went down. I think he expected contact. When he didn't get any, he fell down. Well, let's take a look from behind the quarterback. Ruth from the right side. It's a big completion for Hessler, just a sophomore. They wanted to get the, the ball to their big play man, Ray Carruth. He just stumbled. He had a lot of running room in front of him. Yeah, he'd popped out of there with his speed. He might have outrun everybody. Lund Lyndon Henry comes into the backfield now for Colorado as they have the first down at the 37-yard line. Hessler again throws the ball with plenty of time. Intended for Tennyson McCarty, no flag, defending Terrell Farley. So Farley has already made two big plays in the ball game. The defensive backs, Mike Minter is the ringleader for the Cornhuskers in that secondary. Tony Veland is a former quarterback, very steady, but it's Minter, the man who flies all over the field. They're the stories for the day this afternoon for uh, Colorado. Their offense needs big plays from their wide receivers and defensively hold that rushing attack for uh, Nebraska under 250 yards. Again, no backs in the backfield as the Buffaloes spread them out and Hessler on second down and 10. Too much time. Have a flag. He burned the clock. So the play was a little late getting in. The alignment was late getting organized and they used up the 25 second clock. Rick Neuheisel is calling the plays, and by now, Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator for Nebraska, knows what uh, Neuheisel wants to do, and that is spread them out and throw the football. And they're looking at second down and 15 now here in the first quarter of play. Just getting underway at Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado, on the campus of the university. Same setup with Trotman going up into a slot. Blitzer back. The blitz is on the pass to the roof. He's hit on the sideline, but gets away and uh, picks up about seven yards on the play. But it's still going to be third and long as he got away from Mike Minter, and then the defender hit him and knocked him forward. So put the ball just short of the 39-yard line, and it'll be third down and seven. Kansas State beating Kansas 41 to 7. Nebraska beat Kansas State last week, and Kansas State now has turned on the Jayhawks and are whipping them for their first loss of the season. That's this pass thrown to Farouk. He had him coming across the middle. He had him available for at least a short game. Yeah. The ball was thrown hard, yeah. and uh, he couldn't get it. The idea was to throw quickly. Nebraska had nine quarterback sacks last week against Kansas State. They have a good pass rush. Has, uh, uh, New Eyes will want to throw quickly before the rush got there. Andy Mitchell is in the punt. He's had four blocked this year. Mike Pullman is deep to receive it for the Cornhuskers. Along with number four, Octavius McFarland, who is a, a DB. He's Buff back there. Buffaloes have had problems with their punt protection. Again, I think they burned, no, burned a good punt, too. That was a great one. That was a heck of a punt. Goes <laughs> into the end zone, but the penalty flags got him before the ball was snapped. The referee today is Terry Turlington. He heads a big eight crew, obviously, since this is a conference game. There they are. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Fourth down. So there is tension. Don't you ever doubt it in this ball game here in Boulder today. It means a lot to both teams. That was a 61 yard punt that was wasted. Damon Benning now has come on the field to join Mike Fullman in the punt return. Benning is a tailback. Nebraska has always been able to return the ball well and Colorado has had four punts blocked in their first seven games. Yeah, the special teams play for Colorado has been pretty ragged been, the last been, couple of weeks. And shaky at best. Bobby Hawk scratching his head and working overtime on it. Ball's out of there again. It's a very high, but this time it's hanging and will not go as far and takes a Nebraska bounce. It picked up 10 yards on that one bounce. So the Huskers have great field position for their first possession. 
Hector is the man for the Cornhuskers. There are his numbers as you can see in his career. You also add to that 31 rushing touchdowns. He's something in this offense. And the starting lineup, backs and receivers for Chili's. You've got Amon Green. Get used to the name, folks. He's only a freshman. And he is terrific. He's going to be around a good long time. First down for Nebraska. The ball is at the 43 after the short punt. And here goes Frazier down the line, delivers the ball to Green. Green's on the corner, going down the sidelines. He's on his way. He's got a touchdown. 57 yards. They knew it was coming, and they still couldn't stop it. From behind, watch this man right here. That's Black. He's the rover back that was instilled in, in by A.J. Kristoff. He was going to make the tackles from the inside out. He gets hung up on the way with all the uh, trash. The wide receiver, Holbein, number five, blocks the wide receiver. As advertised, option for a touchdown. They use 10 seconds for the play. 13 minutes and 13 seconds to play in the first quarter. Olsen Field is quiet. The Buffaloes are stunned, and the Cornhuskers lead 7 to nothing. The tumbling waters coming down off the flat irons. Down inside Olsen Field, it's a hopeful crowd now. As Chris Brown, the freshman, kicks it off for Nebraska. High and deep into the end zone. Lyndon Henry will not return it. And in case you just sat down to watch the game, here's how the first touchdown was scored. Take a look at these three defensive men outside as the option's going to come this way. You've got three Colorado Buffaloes outside. Look at them. Now watch the blocking when it develops. Right here. Stop it right here. You got Makovica blocking one. You got Holbein out there. That's the thing that everybody misses on this offense is the blocking by the backs and the wide receivers. Outstanding. And plus, you just outrun them to the sideline. Green outran the middle linebacker. So here comes Colorado from the 20. Their first possession started at the 15, and they couldn't do anything with it. They come to the same alignment. Spread them out. They've got five wideouts, including the back and John Hessler. Getting pursuit from the back, jumps it off. And there was no chance in the world for Troutman to catch the ball because he threw it hard right into his knees. And now a moment with Lynn Swan on the field. Chief, let's make no mistake about it that Rick Neuheisel's inaugural season, this is his very first big game because everything is on the line and everything that he has to do, he has to do almost perfectly to stay with this Nebraska football team. Two things will be tested. His philosophy about staying relaxed and having fun and his ability as a teacher. If he gets John Hessler prepared well to play a game and not make mistakes, they can match Nebraska. That's the only hope right now for them to stay in this ball game, Keith. Well, it looks to me like young John needs uh, somebody to get him and bring him back down to the ground because he's pretty jacked up right now. Here's the pass thrown down the middle. It's much too long. The route was out in front. But he, he missed him. Uh, it was not as much overthrown as one would have thought about 10 yards before the ball got there because Carruth is so fast. That's exactly right. The fastest man on the team. They say he's been uh, timed in 4-1-7 in a 40-yard dash. Uh, I think uh, most of the pro scouts that have been around, uh, the college uh, people that have timed him, say the 4-2, 4-2-5. That's still the fastest on the field today. Hessler so far in this game now, they're on their second possession. It's two of seven passes for 23 yards. They haven't really tried to run the ball. They tried an option, and it didn't work too much. Here's another pass. As Hessler goes down the middle with it, and he misses the man. Darren Shiverini. Shiverini was available, and he missed it. Yes, he was, and that was probably the first man that was wide open that Hessler missed. Not a good start for the Buffalo. Oh, they will have to punt it. Andy Mitchell, who had a 61-yarder, was lost because of penalty, then wound up with a 25-yarder. And uh, Nebraska went 57 yards for the opening touchdown. Number 12 is Mike Coleman, who came over from uh, Rutgers. And uh, Damon Binning is the tailback. I'm sure you've heard that name before. So I don't know how long 
four tailbacks out of Omaha. If they let it hit the ground, it ought to go the other way, and it does. It was a tail dragger, and those things can sometimes roll a long way when they're on the turf. And this one will stop at about the 27, 28 yard line. Tonight on ABC, spend Halloween the great party on the Jeff Foxworthy show, followed by maybe this time in Bette Midler and Sarah Jessica Parker, star of the network premiere of Focus Focus. That's all new all tonight on ABC. So the ball sits right in between the 27, 28 yard line hash marks, Nebraska's second possession. And they come out for the same unit. Except they've got Bedrill now out there at a wide out position, number 25. He's another one of those wingbacks or wide outs that can really block it. He just cuts it down. Here goes Frazier down the line on the option, same play to score on. This time they get green after five yards as Ryan Black. They come out with a nickel back defense here, and Ryan Black finally made the tackle. Similar play that they ran the first play of the game. The offensive front for the Nebraska Cornhuskers anchored by number 54, Aaron Graham. That ball, let me tell you this about this big guy, and they've got uh, one, two, three, 300 pounders up there. But this is a year of a lot of good centers around the country. But this fellow is almost in a class by himself. He's up there right with the best. On second down, here comes Green. And taken down at the 36-yard line by Donnell Leomitty. So if we have Nebraska punting today, I'll give you the stat on uh, Graham uh, because it's remarkable. The defensive alignment for Colorado is led by that middle linebacker, Matt Russell. He is one of those flyers. He goes all over the field. He's just a wrecker. If he looks like a clown, it's because he is the comedian. He's the team comedian, keeps everybody loose. Kerry Hicks playing a little dinged up in the down group, the front four. But they need some big effort from that middle group, the down group, to handle this Nebraska offense. It is third down and two. Get it outside, and they got him. Number 59 went through there and got him. Greg Jones, the junior from Denver. And so that gets a roar from the home crowd. Defensive backs for Colorado, Steve Rosgo, the free safety, is also the punt returner, and he's the man dropping deep right now to accept the punt from Jesse Cox. Aaron Graham is the center on all the snaps. He gets the ball back to the punter, 0 0.7, 0.07, and he has never had a bad snap on a punt. Ball goes right through Rosgo's hand. And he's lucky to cover it. It went right through his hands. Because he was looking at the man bearing down on him, didn't look the ball into his hands, and almost had a catastrophe. Well, first of all, it's a poor punt, and Roscoe wants to get over there and stop it from rolling. He grabbed it and looking at the, uh, the defensive man coming down at the same time and was fortunate to get back on the football. So the Buffaloes are having a hard time getting started. Maybe a little bit of nerves playing in front of the home crowd. Northwestern comes back to beat Illinois in Champaign, 17 to 14. More testimony to the medal of the Northwestern Wildcats this year. And Bain is not an easy place to win. Here's your first real running play of the ball game. And voila, it worked for the first down as Herschel Trotman goes for 13. Trotman is the one in the backfield that has the explosiveness. He's not big, only 5'7", but uh, he, along with those wide receivers, have big play written all over him. Terrell Farley has just come off the field, injured for Nebraska. It was only his second start. So move the ball to the 28-yard line for the Buffaloes. They've got a first down, and Hester throw it again down the middle. He goes with it, passes caught. Going a little bit behind the receiver to Ruth, but it's another first down for Colorado. Now all of a sudden here is a buoyancy that we have not seen before. Now here's what Colorado wants to do. There's one receiver, two, 
three, four. Now watch as the receiver is just going to break to the inside. You spread them out across the field, take short drops, and throw quickly before the defense gets there. It's a nice job of the receiver helping Hessler out. That ball was thrown behind him. Lyndon Harry at the backfield, first down at the 43 for the Buffaloes. Henry's got the ball. Big strong fellow turns it inside, picks up about four yards. And right now we're off to New York with John Thunders. Thanks a lot. Yes, yes. Poor old Ray Goff. He just had the all the wheels knocked off his wagon though when he lost Edward. He lost Ed, the ball. injuries are everywhere. Yeah. Hessler back, pressure coming, pass away, good to Trotman, shakes one, got a first down, shakes another, still going. Fine run by Trotman, short pass, big run, 32-yard line of Nebraska, first down, Colorado. From behind the quarterback, he's got all those fast receivers. Now he's going to throw a little curl pattern across in front of the linebackers to Troutman. We mentioned how he had big play written all over him. He broke about four tackles, and if Beelan doesn't make the play, it's six. Well, down to Buffaloes, who had this possession start after Roscoe's fumble at their own 15 and moved it down to the Nebraska 31. Cornhusker leading seven to nothing. Hessler looking deep. Carruth is there, and it is incomplete, and he went right past the hand of Tyrone Williams, and I think may have obscured the vision for the receiver. Uh, good point, Keith. At least obscured the vision, if not deflected this ball. It's the only chance that uh, Williams had. Watch number eight. He's going to get beat to the inside. Now watch as he comes across. I think he deflected it. Yeah, it looked like a nice play. Three-year starter, Ty Williams. Farley is back in, second down and 10 for Colorado as Terrell Farley goes back to his linebacking position. Harlan Barnes is in the backfield now for Colorado. Hessler running an option with him. Hessler pulls it down, takes off, and gets the first down. He goes into the sidelines very hard, but he got his first down, and he runs back onto the field. is playing for Coy Detmer who is out for the year with a knee injury and one of the things that Hessler does a lot better than Coy does is run the football and run the option. Put the ball at the 18 of Nebraska first down for Colorado. 820 to go in the first quarter. Nebraska leading seven to nothing. Hessler back. Lost it to the corner of the end zone. Savoy, touchdown. Beautiful pass. Well, here's what the matchup that you wanted right here. You got one-on-one, -on -one and you're just going to run a fade. Everybody else is out of the ball game. You got your best receivers out against their defensive backs. Savoy, the leading receiver coming into the ball game, that's his fourth touchdown reception on the year. Neil Voskitcherin for the extra point. It's good. Well, the Colorado Buffaloes absorb the shock. Nebraska scored on the very first play of the game. They have come back now to tie. And it's 7-7 with 8-19 to go in the first quarter. Okay, the transfer from UCLA will kick it off for Colorado. It'll be Damon Benning and Clinton. You hear me now? It's two tailbacks. Two tailbacks. Waiting to receive it. Leslie hammers it. Not much wind. It's going to go way back into the end zone, and Child will not return it. So it'll be a first down out at the 20 for Nebraska. These are the games that we have for next week. Story of the year, Northwestern, huh? So far. 
I think it has to be regardless of what happens from here on. Unbelievable. They don't play Ohio State. First down, here's Frazier handing the ball inside to the fullback, the first man, and Jeff Makovica from Brainerd, Nebraska, will pick up a couple of yards. Nebraska coming in. The offense is Tommy Frazier. They're averaging 427 yards on the ground, and he is the guy that makes them go. Defensively, they have got to put pressure on quarterback Hessler. They did that the first series, the first two series. The last time, Hessler got it. Second down and eight. Frazier changing the play. Rolls it out. Looks to throw. Lets it go, and it is incomplete. The pass intended for Brendan Holbein. Buffalo defense gave Holbein no room at all on the sideline. He could not come back to the ball. These Nebraska wide receivers, Keith, and I'm talking about Ball and Holbein and Cluster Johnson and Bedrill, they're not wide receivers like the wide receivers of Colorado. They are more blocking backs and running backs playing those positions. They are great blockers because of, because of the system. A lot of moving around before the snap. On third down and eight, Frazier drops it underneath. The pass is completed to Bedrill and Bedrill. Crosses midfield and steps out of bounds just before he got there. He hit the chalk and uh, one man standing there on the sideline at about the 49-yard line. John Bedrill is a junior from Gregory, South Dakota, 5'11 and 200. Normally you think of wingbacks and wideouts as being little fellows, not these guys. They're yeah. all too Well, like pounds. I said, they're, they primarily they're in there to block, and that time Bedrill had a nice crossing route and picked up a big first down with the pass, Tommy Frazier. Just short of the 49-yard line. 7-7 tie, 7-20 to play in the first quarter. This is Armand Green. And the Buffaloes eat him up just about the line of scrimmage. Armand Green, 6-footer, 210, freshman, Omaha. Benning, junior, Omaha. Clinton Child, senior, Omaha. James Sims, sophomore, Omaha. <laughs> I mean, they got uh -huh. a tailback out of there. They've had four different starters at the tailback position because of suspensions or injuries. Second down and nine for Nebraska at the 49. Frazier on the option, keeps it. Hit hard, but he's strong. And he pulls his way to the 44 of Colorado. Ryan Black came up out of the secondary, the nickel back, and just popped him. Frazier just shrugged him off. Frazier ran through him. Frazier is 6'2 uh, and 210 pounds. Black is only 180. So Frazier, in all his, in actuality, is a running back playing quarterback. Third down and three. This is Green, close to the first down, but I don't think he's got it. The ball popped out of the stack. They're calling it down. Calling him down. All that running is for off. But I'm not at all sure that he picked up his first down. Tommy Frazier wasn't going to uh, trust the official's uh, signal. He ran after him anyway and tried to tackle him. It's going to be fourth. Well, let's take a look. Third and short, and they hand it to their tailback. The ball is out. The ball is out, clearly out. Before he hit the ground. So oh, the Huskers got lucky. Yeah, that's a, that's a call that went Nebraska's way. Fourth and one. Green is the single back. You see Frazier probably get in uh, Green's, uh, Aaron Graham's hip pocket. That's what he does, and I don't know if he made it. I don't think he made it. Matt Russell among those that helped turn him back, and Greg Jones. They'll measure.
I think they had to be across the uh, 42 uh -huh. to get it. They had to be over the 42. I think they're short by about a half a yard. Bobby. They didn't make it. There you go. Third and fourth and short. Defensive line goes down below the offensive line. Big play for the defense, Colorado. So the... The... Um, shock of that opening touchdown by Nebraska and now all of a sudden Colorado is really flying high with they come back to score and now the defense has stopped Nebraska in the middle of the field they had a touchdown he they almost had the touchdown yep on the 42 Kessler sets up and throws short he had right the roof and missed him now here's some news from John Saunders listen well Keith the guy sitting next to you is gonna like Dwight yeah. <laughs> there he, he, is. he blames me for the interceptions. He takes credit for everything else. <laughs> That's great. Uh, second down and ten. And Colorado spins a timeout. 4.50 to go. And it's 7-7. There is Corey Detmer. We just turn uh, turn him around here. We'll get a chance to see him. There he is. He started the season at the quarterback. Many thought he was going to be one of the better ones in the country. Yeah. Then he went down with knee injury and surgery. He was leading the nation in passing. Exactly. This week, Hoying has taken the lead in passing but the nation. Let's reiterate. He was leading the nation in passing, uh, was Detmer. And... And John Hessler stepped in and has done a, a pretty good job until the last two ball games. The last two ball games not so good, but coming out this ball game, Hessler has shown some toughness in getting that uh, sharpness back that he had earlier in the year. Herschel Trotman lines up at tailback now. Buffaloes take over after holding him on defense. Second down and ten in the first quarter. Throws an interception. Threw the ball right to Terrell Farley, and Farley is on his way. He's finally knocked out of bounds at the 14-yard line of Colorado. So Hessler puts no air under the ball, and uh, Terrell Farley, who has become a very dramatic personality on the defensive side of the ball. He's trying to get the ball on a curl right here, but watch Farley right here. He's just going to drop back and pick it off. Obviously, he does not pick up Farley with the throw this ball. Farley has two interceptions already on the year. Both of them he ran back for touchdowns. We mentioned he had blocked two punts. He is a big play linebacker right here. Farley, good presence, pretty good hands, and off to the races. And the Huskers have it first down at the Colorado 14-yard line. They go into the power eye. It is Frazier handing to Green, and Green is caught behind the line of scrimmage as Donnell Liam and he blitzed on the play and got in. Let's go back and take a look. A key play, a little earlier, that fumble by Green on, on third down. The ball that's going to come out. It's out we, from another angle. We knew it was out. And here is the uh, the corner, Wilkins, number 20. He picks this ball up and runs it in for a touchdown. That was disallowed by the official. They called him down. Second down and 12. As the ball comes back outside the 16, Frazier sets up. Little shovel pass to Green. Green inside the 10. And taken down at the 7-yard line by Allen Wilbon. Oh, that little shovel play. Yeah. That yeah. Moves him down the field for about... That's ex exactly what it is, Keith. It is a shovel pass, but really it's a option in reverse. Yep. The quarterback is deeper. They are optioning off the end, and he's just pitching the ball forward. Last week, two touchdowns that way on shovel passes against Kansas State. Third down and a long three. Ball at the seven of Colorado following the interception. Frazier is in there for the uh, first down, but not the touchdown. They're going to be about the two, maybe inside the two-yard line. 
At the conclusion of the game, we'll pick a genuine Chevrolet, most valuable player from each team. Today, Chevrolet contributing almost five and a half million dollars to the scholarship funds of the colleges and universities of the country. So here's Nebraska threatening to untie it at seven with three minutes to play in the first quarter. Taking off at the line of scrimmage. Frazier gives it to Green. Touchdown. So the interception, the turnover, and the Cornhuskers cash it in. Take a look at it from the other side of the field. It'll be coming right at you. 59 is Jones. The tight end, 88. That's Jackson. He doesn't do a very good job of blocking, but he doesn't need it. Inside, Green, who only weighs 210 pounds, just takes the tackle of Russell and pulls him into the end zone. Chris Brown, a freshman from South Lake, Texas, who has some leg, knocks it through. We watched him hit 55 yarders in pregame warm-up. This football game has determined the Big 8 Conference Championship over the last eight years, and it looks like it's going to do it again this year. With 2.52 to play in the first quarter, it's 14-7, Nebraska. But if there's one thing that Nebraska and Tom Osborne's offense doesn't need, and that is help and good field position. That time on that drive, they started from the 13-yard line after the interception by Farley. The Huskers come into this ball game with a 20-game win streak. They've already locked in 34 consecutive winning seasons. And... Uh, the records just keep rolling up. Uh, it's unbelievable. You look at some of the records. 206 straight sellouts at home. They're, you know, they're a, they're a, a pretty good road team, uh, Keith. One of the best in the nation at winning on the road. In fact, their uh, road record the last six years is 22-4 and 1. Troutman, you saw him there, number five, waiting. Along with Lyndon Henry, two tailbacks. Chris Brown will kick it off. Both Brown and Leslie appear to be capable of keeping the ball in the end zone all day long if they so choose. But this one won't get there. It's very high, though. Very high. From the two, it's Henry. When you get the ball up that high, you're going to get pretty good coverage, and they did. They take him down at the 15. That's the second time here in the first quarter that Colorado has started a possession at their own 15-yard line. Well, we mentioned early on that the special teams for the Buffs have not been that good. And uh, it makes a difference where you start your field position. Kansas State beats Kansas 41-7. to Both schools in Kansas are at their first loss. K-State equipped in Lincoln last week by about that same score, wasn't it? 42-7? Yeah, like something that. like that. And today they turned around and whacked the Jayhawks. Hessler comes up now, 5 of 14 so far here in the first quarter. This is Henry, and he gets a, maybe a yard and a half on that carry. Jimmy, he's Kenny Rogers. How about that? Kenny, uh, in his shirt sleeves will tell you how warm and comfortable <laughs> yeah. it is if you get don't get in the wind you can sit in there where he is a little balcony outside of rick newheisel's office yeah. very cozy and warm beautiful morning that's the back quick pass again and it's badly thrown thrown behind lyndon henry the idea there is to get the ball to your halfback who is out lined up as a wide receiver on a linebacker and let him catch it and run just missed it. Got to know when to hold him and when to fold. Oh, when to fold. <laughs> Not bad. <Rich. laughs> Can you pick two? <laughs> no, I can't. Third down and nine. That's for getting a lot of time and is lucky to get that one back. Boy, he threw that thing in traffic intended for Chris Anderson. 
And it was almost going the other way as Jamel Williams had a hold of it. What's happening here is Charlie McBride, Keith, the defensive coordinator, has thrown in some zones. Nebraska had always been a man coverage team, but one of the, the wrinkles that he's throwing in today is zones, when you spread him out, he's not going man to man, and he's and Hester's going to have to watch out. There's a look at Charlie. Because there is some zones there. All right, Mitchell is in, and he's going to give Nebraska pretty good field position if Damon Benning and Mike Pullman handle the punt. No pressure on him. He gets it out of there. He gets it across midfield, and they're going to take it. It is Benning stepping up and catching the ball at the 48-yard line. So it's a 37-yard punt with no return. We had an old friend of ours who's been with us a long, long time, uh, Jerry Reuter, who is normally our crew Talco manager, is had a little stroke last week. Jerry is uh, in an Iowa hospital in Iowa City, University Hospital, and uh, recuperating and resting, and we wish what, him. One of his favorite things to do, yeah. Runs a lot, healthy guys. Good All right, it's Binning and Makovica lined up this time behind uh, Frazier in that power eye set. And Frazier still got it, looks down the middle of the field, it goes to the side, and the pass is completed to number 33, Fletcher Johnson, and Johnson canners on in for a touchdown. Fletcher Johnson, 210-pound senior from Bellevue, just went up and took the ball away. Tom Osborne likes to do this. Good field position, fake the run. You've established it all day. Tommy Frazier comes back and throws this ball. Little short, but Johnson goes up and makes the... That's only his 13th catch of the year and his second for a touchdown. And Chris Brown will kick out of John Vedrill's hole. Aaron Graham snap. And the kick is good. And it's 21 to 7, Nebraska. And it's quiet in both. Well, it's certainly uh, quieted down the crowd, Keith. Here's another look at it. When you, when you have a play action, your running game has to be working, and it is. Then you can go to your pass, and first down is a great down for passing. Tom Osborne calling the plays. That is the sixth one play scoring drive this year for Nebraska. John Hessler has had two very bad possessions now as a result of Charlie McBride and the defensive secondary people changing yes. their tune. Well, and Rick Neuheisel was telling us yesterday that what, one of the things they wanted to do is at least get the ball offensively to midfield before you turn it over or have to punt it. You don't want to give it up on downs around midfield where they can just do anything they want to do. At least offensively get it to the 40 or 50 and then punt it so they'd have to go the length of the field. 147 remaining in the first quarter. It's been a long quarter. Brown will kick it off with Henry and Trotman waiting for it. There have been 11 possessions with this one in the last 13 minutes of the first quarter. So that ball's been moving around back and forth. And they're going to run it out. He got a little crack. He gets past that one. He'll be all right. He got it out as far as the 22, Lyndon Henry. He was close to breaking a pretty good play there. Yes, he was. Well, at least they get it across the 20. Ohio State pounded Iowa. It's 56 to 7 at half. And Tennessee, uh, Tennessee has scored 56 against uh, South Carolina today. Only loss for Tennessee was at Florida. There's a pretty good ball club. And the one we noted a while ago, Kansas State, beating Kansas. Northwestern over Illinois. Tennessee, Penn State will test Northwestern next week. Guaranteed. Hessler's in there. Let's see now if the youngster's been able to settle himself a bit. Give it off to Lyndon Henry. Henry took a shot in the back from uh, Wistrom. Grant Wistrom. Well, not only is uh, Nebraska good offensively with the run, they lead the nation in rushing yardage, but defensively, they're second in the nation at stopping the run. They only allow 
73 yards per game on the average. There's another kid in that defensive front, though, that's playing a lot more as the year goes on named Chad Kelsey, and he was involved in that last tackle. He was on the bottom. He's a true freshman. Yep. I mean, he's getting a lot of playing time. Good one. It is second down and nine. Hessler's pass on the Peru, and Minter really popped him. Mike Minter, Jr. from Lawton, Oklahoma. That's just a nice play by Minter. He was out all last year with a knee injury. The championship season, he missed it. Here's Minter here. Now, when the ball is thrown out here in the flat, he's just going to react up to it. He's the safety. He sees it in front of him, and watch how quickly he gets up to shut it down. Majoring in engineering, he and Beal and both, the two safeties, very bright. No back. Pressure coming, passes away. It's Bapa on the ricochet by Herschel Trotman. And he picks up a first down. The pass intended for number 41, McCarty, and it bounced into the hands of Trotman. Well, the Buffaloes get a little break there. For sure, Keith, because another interception inside the 40-yard line would have been tough. Linebackers are going to drop straight back, and that usually tells you zone. So you got to be careful. And just a little bit of fortune there for the Buffs. First quarter was over, and it was a long one. Nebraska leads it 21-7. Quarter with Nebraska leading 21 to 7. And it is Herschel Troutman turning back into the middle. The Peters brothers, Christian and Jason, are out of there right now. And so they touch the middle and find three yards. Numbers the first quarter, 165 total yards for Nebraska. Pretty good balance. Third down conversions are uh, pretty good. The one turnover for Colorado turned into seven points for Nebraska. Second down, short seven. Trotman pops it over the left side. Gets on the Nebraska side of the field inside the Cornhusker 47. So a good tough run by Trotman. Some pretty good blocking on that side from Smith and Irwin. We were talking about Brian Stoltenberg, the center for Colorado. He has the athletic ability and the strength and the speed. He can snap that ball, pull out, and lead a play. Yes, he can. And that's the mark of a, a good center, Keith, when he has the strength and quickness to snap it, your hands between your legs, and then get out of there. After that run, the Peters brothers are back in the ball game. Christian and Jason, and back goes Hessler, looking to throw it downfield. That is thrown out of town as far as his own man at Carruth is concerned. Minter runs down and gets a hand on it, trying to intercept. But that wasn't anywhere near his target. And it's a nice play by Minter because it was play action, and he read his keys very nicely to know, hey, you're not fooling me. I'm getting over there to help. And the thing he reads is the offensive line. When he sees the offensive line sit back, is in pass protection, and not go forward, there's Charlie McBride, who coaches the defense and does a nice job. He just took off and says, I'm doubling on Carew. Kelsey goes into a down position, making him a defensive end and a rush puncture. Let's see if he goes. Yeah, he goes. And the pass is away and thrown behind Trotman by Hessler. So Hessler looks every once in a while like he's laboring, like the ball's heavy. It's getting there late and it's trailing his target. Well, that that time it was the why it was the running back playing a wide receiver position who just didn't get to the open area. You see, the Washington Huskies have gone out to a 10-0 lead over Southern California. The Trojans were shocked last week in South Bend, and apparently that shock still got a grip on them. They're playing in Seattle. If it's raining, they got a problem. Third down and ten. It's a tough place to play up there, Keith. Yep. As you know. Yep. Time out. Tesla called it. 13-41 to play in the first. A passive Colorado sky. 
today. Tomorrow? Mm, who knows? <laughs> Last time we were here, the day we arrived, they had 11 inches of snow. This trip was very pleasant, except the winds were blowing Wednesday night over 100 miles an hour at Estes Park. Well, I'll take this weather any, any day when we come out here in, the, in, uh, in October. Third down and 10. The ball is at the 47 of Nebraska. Esler after the timeout, looking, ducks it off. The ball goes to number 88. Matt Lepsis is tied in. Lepsis is puts his head down and goes bullying toward a first down marker. And I don't know if he made it. Enough. It does not appear that he did. He didn't. He's a mighty yard short. All right, tomorrow at 3 Eastern, we'll have final round coverage of the Tour Championship. We'll have the finish tomorrow here on ABC Sports. The wind finally quieted down there. It's been blowing up the different scoops. Into the middle, they go for it, and they've got it. Herschel Troutman went over the top, and if that linesman coming in from the side has the mark on it, they got it. Farley was the man that hit him as he went up over the top. But now they, the, they didn't put the ball where that linesman was standing. Remember that Colorado held Nebraska in about this area, too, on the mm -hmm. defensive stands. There must be some quicksand under the turf. But it appeared that he had it either. But not by as much as a thought. And that was close. Got that old left foot, right foot gig going there. Take a look at in the, uh, in the pits, the line of scrimmage. Nioli is 65, blocking on one of the Peters brothers. 63 is Irwin coming around, and that's just good defensive back play, I guess. That's the defensive backs coming Farley, up. Yeah. That's Farley, 43. Yeah. Good play. Irwin, Nioli, Stoltenberg, the inside of that offensive line. Not much room in there with Christian and Jason Peters. That's a good battle all day long, Pete. Two brothers. Here's a hole on the right side for Troutman. And he came very close to putting that one away. Tyrone Williams finally wrestled him down. But that is a first down run by Herschel Trotman. Take a look from behind the defense. Coleman's 46. Watch Beal and number nine is going to miss the tackle right here. It's a nice play by Troutman. Minner's not going to miss. He comes up, slows him up till his friends get there, Williams and the you rest. Know, I sort of have the feeling that Colorado may have underestimated their ability to run the football. Well, I think they're going back to it right now. This is the 11th play on first down. Give it a crop, but again, turns it back into the traffic. That time the flow got him. It was Jason Peter, the sophomore brother. They come out of Locust, New Jersey. Christian, the senior, weighs 300 pounds at 6'3". Jason, the sophomore, is 6'4 and 285. Yeah, they took a survey uh, last week, a couple weeks ago, a uh, team survey, and they said, Christian Peter, the thing about him is he is not the guy you want to be behind if you're going through the food line. If you're going, in the, uh, if you're going to get food, Christian Peter is not the guy you'd be behind. <laughs> 300 pounds. That's the joke. Well, he's going to take everything that's good. <laughs> 21 to 7. Nebraska is leading. Colorado trying to pop through there and get another one. Hessler back to throw. He's got some boy. Now it's too late for that one. And they'll take him down at the 22. Phil Savoy on a post was available for a moment. He didn't see him. And in a flash, it was too late. Well, you're right, Keith. Uh, again, mixing the coverages in the secondary. Hessler, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure, was expecting a lot of man coverage. That's what Nebraska plays 80, 85% of the time. Today, they're mixing that up about half and half, so he's just going to have to pick and choose and be careful when he throws the ball in the secondary that he sees the whole defense. The tight ends have not been uh, obvious at all for Colorado so far in the game. That left us to caught one pass. He's already missed one. There he comes. Quickly away down the middle. It is Chris Anderson to the Six-yard line and a first and goal. Almost got in there. Well, quarterbacks, look at the single coverage right here. Everybody's lined up. Watch what's going to happen. The receiver's going to come down right here, and that's going to be a little wide receiver screen. Now, Anderson is big. He's 6'3 or 6'4. He just drags Williams. Make sure he has the first down. 
But when you get it, when you get the defensive backs lined up on you, you can read man coverage very easily. It is on the seven yard line, first and goal, and handed to Lyndon Henry to the corner, down to about the one. Tony Veland and Michael Booker kept him out of the end zone. It's a big drive for the Buffs, Keith. If they can answer here, kind of bring back the shock that they had from that last touchdown. Anderson, the tall receiver, comes in now, 6'4". Look at this drive, 14 plays. That's what you need. Keep the ball away from Tommy Fraser in that offense. The big guy in pursuit of it, and he got it. <laughs> he went after that ball like he was uh, covering a, a pumpkin or something. Now, Ole is the injured player for Colorado. Chris Nioli, the right guard. There's a look at the play from the other side, from ground level behind the defense. 63 is Irwin, who's going to pull out, gets a block. Who knocks that loose? Is that the middle linebacker? I couldn't tell, but it came out with some authority. Definitely did, and Irwin, who is the left guard and who pulled on the play. They're lucky that the ball didn't go all the way through the end zone. You're exactly right. So that had a lot of momentum. Yeah. And that thing could have gone right through the end zone and been wasted. Heath Irwin is the nephew of Hale Irwin, who uh, Hale Irwin, the uh, golfer who was a was an All-American here uh, at Colorado, the same uh, secondary with Dick Anderson, a former teammate of mine. So the Buffaloes get on the scoreboard at 9:34 to go in the second quarter. Now they'll try to Vaskitcherin will try to make it. A seven point game. Tom says, well, we'll just go down and score some more points. <laughs> We're averaging uh, 54 <laughs> points. Averaging 54 points a game, so we'll get some more. It was Ryan Terwilliger that knocked it out of there and caused the fumble. And the kick is up and the kick is good. So it's 21 to 14, Nebraska with 9.34 to go in the first half. And here's a replay showing the fumble. Here comes to Williger, right there. But the Buffaloes cover it for a very important touchdown. These guys are persistent. He was on the sideline. But Brooke Beringer backing up a quarterback. Corey Schlesinger on a touchdown run here. Tight ends had a huge day, and the Huskers won big. 24 to 7. Take a look at that last touchdown. Watch from behind the defense. Terwilliger, 91, puts his arm right on the football. That's just good defense. Not often that an offensive lineman gets the, an opportunity like this. Look at Irvis. I don't want to knock it out of the end zone. I just want to cover that baby. Come on here, honey. Kessler was over there, too. Save things. Mentioned that uh, his, his uncle Hale Irwin played here. His father also was an outstanding player. He played linebacker for Colorado. Jared Thomas, incidentally, defensive end for Nebraska, has gone to the clubhouse with an injured back. High kick, carrying deep into the end zone. Child will take it and put it down. Speaking of uh, Hale Irwin and golf and all this other stuff, the Tour Championship. Are oh, you this sandbagger? Is, this is not a card from the Tour Championship, but rather my partner. You He shot. <laughs> yeah, you, you'd be leading the tournament. You've been playing in the... Uh, I should have known better than to trust one. <laughs> I should have known better than to trust Lynch one. Yeah. And we don't know. You may be lying about your age, too. <laughs> uh, I am, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I know. <laughs> On first down from the 20, Brian Schuster, who is a junior from Fullerton. Didn't get much on him. He got a yard. As Hesler on the left. 
New Heisel on the right. Rick, of course, a quarterback at UCLA, an MVP in the Rose Bowl. Played with the San Antonio Gunslingers. He did. Second down and nine. Bedrill's a man in motion. Frazier goes the other way with it, pulls up and lets it go to the tight end. Down the middle of the field, Mark Gilman. And it's first down at the 47-yard line. Well, the big old boys just hunker down and roll them out in the mud and blood, and once in a while they get a little piece of glory like this. Tom Osborne loves to throw the ball to his tight ends. This time he's going to hit the tight end down the middle. Watch as a play action is going to go to the top of the screen. Stop it right here. Here's your two tight ends right there going down the field. Tommy Frazier picks out the one down the middle, under threw him a little bit, but still a big completion. And on first down, they give the ball to Binning. In a tailback, Damon Binning is a 205-pound junior out of Omaha. Last year's game, uh, Keith, the Nebraska killed Colorado throwing to their tight ends. In fact, nine of the 12 completions that they had last year were two tight ends. Amon Green uh, scored on his very first carry from 57 yards for the 7-0 lead, first play of the game. His last seven carries, though, has been pretty quiet. He's gained six yards. Well, we're getting all the tailbacks into the game now. Benning settles down on second down and eight. You don't see Nebraska with this formation very often. The play clock's getting pretty yeah. thin, and it expires. They have to spend the time out. Recently, the Broncos... There is a primary reason why Nebraska leads 21 to 14. They've had 19 plays in this game, and they are averaging 10.2 yards per play. On second down and eight. The crowd jumps all over Tommy Fraser as he tries to set him up at the line of scrimmage. And shakes a tackler. Now coming back the other way. That's pretty good defensive play by the Buffaloes because Frazier's a big, strong, quick follow, oh, and he was close to popping out of there. He made he made a five-yard loss into a two- or three-yard gain real quick. He puts the ball at the 47-yard line of Colorado. 7.20 to go in the first half. The passing attack for... Nebraska and Tom Osborne is a sneaky passing attack, I call it, because they they choose to throw when they want to throw, and they're very good at it. Third and four, and they're in the shotgun. Green and Frazier back there. And the crowd gets all over it, and Frazier calls a timeout. Now, I don't know whether he's frustrated by the crowd. He could turn to the referee and appeal. Well, I think, I think it took had so long. Up. To yeah. get the substitutions in there, Keith. Yep. But, uh, he saw the time running down. Couldn't do it. So that's that's uh, two timeouts quickly, and they only have one left. Monday. All right, a moment with Lynn Swan. Yeah, Keith. It was Christian Peter that went off the sideline. He has a. Uh, sprained knee, the right knee. He had a brace on it, so the doctor couldn't check it out. So he had to go inside so he could drop his pants, get a good like at it, look at it. We don't know if he'll be back in the ball game or not, Keith. So Thomas is gone and Peter is gone. Huh? Two of them. Third down and four. Same alignment. Got to watch the ball to know when the play develops. It just goes to Tommy Frazier. And he pulls it down like an old-fashioned single-wing play and goes right over left guard for the first down. Quarterback draw, and that's really, uh, when you've got a guy like Frazier running it, it's like a running back draw because he can pick him up and lay him down. How come you call it a quarterback draw when, uh, when uh, single-wing days, they didn't call it that? What's the difference? I, I don't know. I guess the numbers. Now they're wearing 15 and 12. In those days, they were wearing 88. <laughs> <laughs> 41-yard line, first down with Green and McAvicka lined up in a power eye behind Frazier now, and the crowd gets back into it. Here's Frazier setting up the throw down the middle, and he is whacked. Gets the ball away to Green. Green down the sidelines. is really belted at 
the eight-yard line, but it's a first and goal, Nebraska. That is unbelievable. That he can reload this ball and, and get rid of it. You don't think he's not strong? Whew. He was looking downfield to throw to his tight end. His tight end was going to be covered. From the right side of your screen, the tight end's going to come straight down. See him? Coming straight down. He's not open. Now, Frazier's going to get hit. He reloads and throws it all the way over to the sideline to his third receiver, who was green. That may have been the, uh, the, the, the strongest play I've seen all year. You've got to be strong to stay on your feet there. Green uh, left the lineup. Benning is in at tailback. He had to go get a new hat. They hand it to the first man, the fullback. And that's pretty much a wasted play. Makovic gets virtually nothing out of it. Any other, any other quarterback, Keith, in that situation is on the ground. He oh, makes easy. a big play out of it. You bet. Well, Boston College hasn't surrendered, have they? That's at halftime. Tommy Frazier is 5 of 6, 149 yards, and 1 TD. He is the leading passer, efficiency-wise, in the Big 8 Conference. But he doesn't have enough to qualify in the national rankings. Reggie Ball is the man up at the top of the picture. He might get a call here. And penalty flag. They're going to Ball. He's wide open. And he missed it. The fullback moved a little bit early anyway, Keith. So the defender on that side, Kenny Wilkins, fell down. And Reggie Ball was wide open. But it's a penalty call. The illegal procedure against Nebraska Tom anyway. Osborne, Tom Osborne there, he's the man that calls the plays. Usually runs them in with a wide receiver or a tailback. He's an old quarterback that uh, is really a sly fox. We saw a sly fox, a great fox, last week in Hayden Fry. This one here can call plays with the best of them. Look at him, like an old quarterback at, back in Hastings. There's the new version. Third and goal from the eight-yard line for Nebraska. 21-14 ball game, 5.22 to play first half. And the referee, Terry Turlington, says Colorado wants a timeout. So let's spend a moment during this timeout with John Saunders about what's coming up at halftime. Doing each other there, didn't we? <laughs> Why would A.J. want a timeout at that particular He may have point? wanted to see the formation that Tom came out with. He came out with two tight ends, two backs, and one wide receiver. But you can be sure that the formation this time is going to be different. And what A.J. Kristoff, the defensive coordinator, said, I want to see the formation, and that may force Tom to go to his next play in a different formation. Remember the, in the A&M game, we were here before, they came out with this goofy formation, forced A&M to call two times out in a row. That's right. But here's the key play in the drive so far. Play action. Watch to the top of your screen. Fraser's going to get hit right there and just hangs on. Receiver downfield was covered. Came off to the number three receiver on that play. Here's Andy. AJ. And from Idaho. And Captain Blitz, he likes to he likes to be aggressive, likes to blitz, and it's the defensive players like that style. Third and goal from the eight now. Watch the tight end. Green is back in. He becomes a wide receiver. Frazier to throw it. Fires it, intended for Green, and it is incomplete. And it'll be fourth down and goal. And that should get your kicking team on the field. Chris Brown, the place kicker out of South Lake, Texas, was an all-state high school quarterback. Carroll High School. He's only 18 years old. But he's got some leg. This will be a 25-yard field goal try. Ron Bedro holds it. Aaron Graham snaps it. What just snap? Boom, 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 boom. And Chris, and it's popped right down the highway. And so Nebraska's lead goes to 10 at 24, 14, 5, 15 to play first half. 
Now then, if the Buffaloes can answer, it mean a lot to them when they go to the clubhouse. Well, we mentioned both teams at the top had outstanding offenses. Uh, Nebraska came in averaging 54 points a game, and the Buffs averaged 42 points. So they're used to scoring a lot of points. In the so-called red zone, Nebraska 37 of 46. Now in uh, coming into this ball game, and uh, with three touchdowns and a field goal, they've enhanced that considerably. But 26 out of 31 times with Tommy Frazier as quarterback coming into today's ball game, they've scored points. Mm -hmm. Ten plays, 72 yards. Took a long time to get out and get a field goal. I mean, you know, they had two plays, two touchdown drives of only one play. Yep. Chris Brown will kick it off now with Herschel Trotman and Lyndon Henry deep for the Buffaloes. That kick is short. It's high, but it's relatively short. It is Henry up at the nine. Looks for a little daylight, a wall on the side, can't find it. Comes to the 25, and there the Buffaloes will start. Kessler's been shaky the last two or three possessions, last three possessions. One thing, I'm, I'm sure that uh, New Heisel is telling the offense over there on the sideline, we got a lot of time, five minutes, doesn't matter how long it takes, we just need some points on the board. Three of New, we'd like to have seven. New Kessler is nine of 12, Keith, 115 yards. On the last possession now, nine and 20 they ran the ball. Nine and 22. is not on the field. They're going to go for the run with Henry, and Lyndon Henry was going to get about four yards on the carry. So Chris Dioli is not on the field, and Swanee can tell us why. Yeah, Keith, he's walking off the field right now. He sprained his right ankle. It's an ankle that's been giving him a problem throughout the year. They got him on the sideline. They tried to retape it. He couldn't go with it, so now they're just going to get him into the locker room early and try and tend to it inside. Keith? All righty, Jared Tomich. Tomich is back in at defensive end. He had been out for quite a while with the back. And Christian Peter is back in the middle of the trenches for the defender. This pass is completed to Phil Savoy, who is a sophomore. And he picks up a first down. And that was a good crisp bang-bang play, the kind that the, the Colorado coaches uh, were talking about all day, and, all week. And, and against a zone coverage where now they're reacting a little bit better to it. Savoy stopping, getting in an open gap, and staying there. The throw is made, and he's running after the catch. Buffaloes have no times out remaining, so they've got four minutes and 15 seconds remaining on the clock as they come to the line of scrimmage for the snap. Here again is Henry bouncing outside. You see the foot speed of the Nebraska defenders. No way. Jamel Williams, a linebacker. Did you see what Wistrom did to that, <laughs> that defensive end? Uh, that was a, like a draw trap, and uh, Wistrom, the defensive end, just stuffed that guard when he came over there. Grant Wistrom, a sophomore, 240-pounder from Webb City, lanky fellow, still growing probably. That's the guard from the right side. Could have come over right there, and he is stuffed. That's Wistrom. <laughs> he says, I've seen this before, and it ain't coming this way. Second down and eight. Kessler's got Carruth, but doesn't see him and throws it away. He had Carruth down the middle, but Tomich didn't give him any time. Well, one of the stories going in for Nebraska defensively, they've got to get some pressure on John Hessler. And I think with Nioli's injury, the offensive guard, that's going to help put the pressure on, uh, on Hessler. If you play man coverage in your secondary, you better get some pressure on the quarterback. Andrew Welch, the backup center, sophomore out of Walnut Creek, California, is in there at the right guard spot. Number 74. Double wide now, bottom of the picture. By themselves out here. Third and eight. Bad pass. Chris Anderson was the intended receiver, but he turned, he was in, and the ball went out. And, uh, and 
Jack. They expected him to go the other way. You see uh, Neuheisel talking to the receiver. And right after the ball was thrown, Hester motioned to the outside. Just a miscommunication. But it brings in the punter, Andy Mitchell. And so with 3.26 to play and one timeout remaining, Nebraska gets the ball back, leading 24 to 20. We're in the first half. yard return and next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern on ABC's College Football. Amon Green lines up in the backfield. Ball is on the 17. Got the closed end of the stadium and the crowd getting on him. Give it to Green. Bouncing outside and finally hit from behind and taken down. And the man that got him was number 95, Darrell Price. Game one, second down, nine. The idea for the Buffs is put nine men up near the line of scrimmage to stop the run and force them to throw. And they've thrown some and done, been successful, but you got to stop the run against Nebraska first and foremost. That pass is completed to Reggie Ball and uh, very close to a first down. Kind of an interesting defensive alignment there for a moment. There was a hole in the middle of the defense, and Matt Russell stepped up and went down into three point. Yes. The middle lanebacker. Matt Russell, we mentioned he was the comedian, the clown. He's the leading tackler this year. He had an interception for a touchdown uh, last week that really helped. They were struggling in Iowa State. His interception in the second half really helped breeze the way for them to win in the fourth quarter. Third and a short yard. Got it. Tailback Green to the 30 yard line where he's written down. Nebraska's offensive front, Chris Dishman is 310, Aaron Taylor 305, Eric Anderson 300. The run of the bunch is Aaron Graham, the center at 275, and Steve Ott, the right guard at 290. And, and not one of them is over 6'4, Keith, and a couple of them are 6'1, so they're squatty bodies, but they've got good feet, and that's the key. the shotgun Frazier quick flip ball caught by Cluster Johnson who has a touchdown in the game and Johnson picks up another first down that stops the clock at uh, 132. Tommy Frazier says what is this we got this shotgun business we can go three and four wide receivers we don't always run on that option. Frazier a four year starter. It's a pretty good looking football team. Bob. I like the offensive they lost for the offensive right. lineman from last year they just Move the next ones up. Number 88, uh, the tight end, broke his stance. Keldon Jackson, redshirt freshman out of Diamond Bar, California, broke the stance. And got the flag flying. When Nebraska needs to throw, Tom gets Jackson in the ball game because he is the best of the receiving, receiving tight ends. No, I the tight end's allowed, isn't he? He is allowed to move, but if you move. pull, if you pull the guy, that's what they're talking about right now. Whether or not he pulled him off. Colorado doesn't have a timeout. If someone in the black shirt was trying to call one, they don't have any to, to call. Let's see. Dead ball, illegal substitution on the defense. Five yards. Yeah, that was what the call was. So the Buffaloes hurt themselves. Well, they haven't been penalized too much today. New Heisel's team is the most penalized team in the Big Eight, and that has hurt them. But Rick was telling us yesterday to win this game, we got to have no sacks, no penalties, and no interceptions. And for the most part, they've avoided those today. 114 left. Yeah, they had 69 penalties coming into the game. That's a lot. Little stuff. Frazier loads it up. Throws over Reggie Ball's head out of bounds incomplete. And there's a penalty flag. Now back to Frazier through the ball. Do we have a face mask? Somebody grabbing him or rough the passer? Maybe. Roughing the passer. Well, see, that's, that's, that's the thing 
that we were just mentioning about the most penalized team in the Big A. Here you go. From the left side, he's going to come in and hit Frazier. No, no, he can't do that. No, that's too obvious. And if you're going to hit him, you don't hit him up around his shoulders and his helmet to leave a, a questionnaire in the referee's mind. I mean, uh, uh, Price may have been off of his feet and in the air, but, but you still don't go up around his shoulders and his neck and his helmet and hit him. So that 15-yard penalty puts the ball down at the Buffalo 37 with 101 to play in the first half. And Frazier, a little shovel pass to Green. The ball is rolling around loose, and it is covered. It'll be an incomplete forward pass. And that's why that thing is so effective. Yes. Even if it fails, it's and effective. Who, and who should run it better than Frazier? Because, like I say, it's like an option. It's like a forward option rather than a backward option. Although, the only difference in this is if it's forward and you fumble it, it's like it's a pass. Incomplete. Second and ten with 55 seconds. Binning back there with Frazier. Ball is thrown underneath. And uh, penalty flag. Jerry's got a hold of his face mask. Yep. They made the tackle. So they're going to tack on at least five on Cluster Johnson as they catch. Last four plays have been what, three flags been against the defense. Yep. And this is one where you don't want to you don't want to give them another score before you go in at halftime. Nebraska does not need any help. Exactly. Ferguson taking him down as the man with his hand tangled up in the face mask. There's the five yard penalty. So put it on the 24 yard line, make it a first down for Nebraska. They've got 48 seconds. The clock is running. They've got one timeout. They lead 24 to 14. Frazier up the middle. Look, he is just tough. To Look just him. like Frankie Sinkwich. <laughs> That's another first down for the Huskers. I mean, they've got a spread formation, and Frazier's back there, and he just makes no bones about it. The guards pull, and they just takes off running. 13 yard line, first down, Huskers. Spinning in motion, he gets outside on the little shovel to him. That was a lateral pass. And Benning is inside the 10. So Nebraska spins its final timeout, stopping the clock at 15 seconds. Halftime credential, halftime report. John Saunders scores and highlights. We'll have a report from Lewis Johnson on the Northwestern Wildcats and their narrow victory today down in Champaign. What a great job Gary Barnett's done, huh? He's the freshman kicker. I like him. They lost They lost a good one last year in uh, first day, the number one draft, number one choice in the baseball draft, but this kid's pretty good. Well, Darren took a load of money to the bank, though, and had a big season, so his future looks pretty bright in baseball. The kicker cranking up, but they got 15 seconds and no timeouts remaining, so it looks like they want to go for one more play and then try to get the kicker in. And, Keith, it, I, I, it cannot be a run play. Nope. Or, or if it is a run play, it has to be wide and, and get out of bounds. So it, it could be an option, and, and Frazier may say, all right, either I've got to keep it and get out of bounds if I don't get in the, in the score, or I've got to toss it and get out of bounds because if it don't get out of bounds or you don't throw the pass in completion, the clock will run out. Only 15 seconds. Damon Benning is the tailback. They're throwing. Touchdown. That throw. Well, Tom Osborne, boy, he saves these plays. He knows when to pull them out. Nice call, nice execution. He's been doing it for a, for a few years. Round for the point. Touchdown came with 10 seconds to play in the first half. A little 
right took it. Well, it was good. That is the 70th, 7-0. Frazier touchdown pass a run in his 32 games. She's the key, there is no question. Frazier's gonna take it and roll just a little bit this way. Now, over here, the tight end is going to go deep to draw all the attention. Now, watch Bedro right here. He's just going to sneak right underneath, and the throw is going to be perfect. Little play action. Roll a little bit. Bedro sneaks in under the tight end. Got to get out of the way of the umpire, and he just sticks it to him. I mean, it's not its not your spread offense. It's not, it's, but it's, it's very efficient. Nebraska, the last couple of years, have been a very efficient passing team. By that, I mean the number of touchdown passes to the number of passes thrown has been tops in the conference. Chris Brown has gone out and, and summoned all of his teammates into a little huddle as if uh, he's bringing some special information here. But I can't imagine anything other than a wallop. 31 to 14. Where we are in the ball game, Nebraska leading. If Colorado doesn't mount some kind of a comeback in the second half, I don't know who's going to challenge Nebraska the rest of the way. I guess they can just buy their suntan oil now. That's Putman, two yards deep in the end zone. Back to the 20. Down he goes. Five seconds remain on the clock. That was a big, big score in this ball game, Keith. And they started it from their own 17-yard line. Colorado helped them along the way a little bit with some defensive uh, penalties. But a big score. You go down, you go into the locker room down 17 points as the Buffs are going to do versus going down in about 10 points. It's a big difference. You've got Savoy and Anderson coming to the bottom of your picture now. It figures that uh, Peru, so all three of them, they're going to take off. And Hester's going to throw it probably just as far as he can. Now he can't either. He throws it to Savoy, completes the pass, but it's only to the 30-yard line, and that'll do it for the halftime. So Nebraska getting a late touchdown here in the second half, as Bob said, stretches it out to a 17-point lead, 31-14. to 14. So they scored first on the very first offensive play of the game, take the lead, and they scored last at the half. And that's where we are. As the steamroller, they scored the last four times they had the ball, and nobody can stop them. I mean, they do it one way, uh, rushing, and then they'll do it another way, throwing. And they get the ball to start the second half of play, so this is very crucial moment for the Colorado Buffaloes. Their defense has to hunker down and somehow get a hold of this Nebraska juggernaut. Otherwise, you can Ross in the boat in Oregon. High kick. 11-yard line, Clinton Child. And Childs is up to about the 28. Take a look at the halftime numbers. Uh, looking for Nebraska. Total yardage, 295, but 184 passing, only 111 rushing. Penalties. Look at the penalties for Colorado. Five for 36. Nebraska has yet to been pe be penalized. That means they've got 74 for the season. Penalties. But little stuff, too, right? Generally not big things. Frazier hands it off to his fullback, and he backs his way for an extra four yards after the first hit. Macabega picking up about seven or eight yards. The leaders for Nebraska, Frazier is having a good first half, 184 yards and two touchdowns. Green, the freshman, with 69 yards and two touchdowns rushing. And the receivers, uh, Johnson leads them, 72 yards and a touchdown, and Vedro also has a touchdown. Defensively, the leaders, Leo Meadey, six tackles, Rosga and Black, both with five. Makovica actually got nine yards on the previous play and just picked up a first down for the Cornhuskers at the 40-yard line. 
So they start out with an attitude that they can run the ball up the middle, and they have so far. Nebraska had the ball seven times. The first time they had it, one play for a touchdown. Then look down to the fifth time, one play, another touchdown. The last four possessions they had, they had three touchdowns and a field goal. So from the 40, it is a first down. And this is where you can open it up. They stay with a running game. Give it a green, the tailback, picks up five yards, and we go to Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, at halftime, Rick Neuheisel was confident his offense could move the football against Nebraska, and he wasn't overly concerned about the 17-point deficit. He was going to come back in, try and stop their play-action pass, and control the tight end. And on the other side, Tom Osborne said that, that he was surprised that Colorado could run the ball well up the middle. He just will continue to adjust and make the plays and said he hopefully will come out on top. Keith? <laughs> That's a pretty good chance of that. Second down and five. Hail back Green runs into one of his blockers who was stacked up by a Colorado defender. And Green will lose yeah, a yard. Price. Darryl Price. Nice job there. Yeah, he just jammed it, didn't he? Well, we talked about Nebraska, what they needed to do. Tommy Frazier is the story. He's 184 yards, six rushes for 32 yards, and he is the man. And pressure the quarterback. They've had four hurries. They give a, they've got him for a sack. They forced an interception, and they've given up one touchdown pass. Now, you've got the rover in. You've got a, a nickelback in the ball game on third down and five for Colorado. Frazier looking around. Throws, got his man. Passes caught by Brendan Holbein for a first down at the Colorado 39 and a penalty flag. Placement inadvertent. So that'll move the ball from inside the 39, somewhere down around the 33. Out Colorado. Not a sophisticated passing game that, that Tom Osborne has at Nebraska, but because the running game is so good and so dominant that you have to respect the fake even on third and five, and he just has Frazier look for one area, and he's good enough to throw it in that area. They put the ball right on the 34 for the first down snap. Option stops, turns, looks back, goes for the corner and it is incomplete ball running under the ball couldn't get to it good good play uh, good call inside the 35 40 yard line Osborne likes to go for it on first down he feels like from from his from his coaches in the press box at halftime they told him run inside and you can throw on first down especially backside down the field that's what he tried to do that good coverage by the Bucks. Second and ten. First man, back to pick up. Yeah, run inside. That was the, the message at halftime. Colorado is stacked on the outside for the option. Makovica and his brother, who was a freshman, are both walk-ons. They both came from eight-man football. Joel is the brother. He's a 225-pounder. <laughs> well, his number was 32. Joe's number was 22. He said, wait, we got to change one of these numbers. It's too close. Third and seven. Over to Reggie Ball. Gets a block. Trying to come back inside on a screen. And the Buffaloes play it well. Frazier is signaling over to Osborne. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. I know it's not a first down. We can go for it. There is no question, Keith, that this is the man right here that makes this offense go. He missed eight games last year and got back and played in the championship game in the Orange Bowl, was named the MVP. They lost four offensive linemen. They've had four different starting tailbacks, but Osborne and Frazier make this offense go. They're going on fourth and four. Complete pass intended for number three, Riley Washington. But that is not the strength of this offense, and that is dropping back and throwing the ball. Play action, options, and stuff like that, but when you're expecting pass, 
This is not that talented of an offensive passing game. Well, now the Colorado defense has done its job. It is now up to the Colorado offense to get things cranked up. So just a quick out, wide receiver. There's nobody blocking. There's nobody blocking 59 Jones, and that does affect the quarterback when he's trying to get the ball right loose. Good news for the Buffaloes. Chris Nioli is back at right guard, oh, oh, oh. and that's exactly where Herschel Troutman went. Right in between Nioli and Melvin Thomas and picks up a big run all the way out to the 43. Let's take a look at what's been going on in the first half. Colorado Hessler was a little bit less than 50%, had a touchdown interception. Troutman, 52 yards, and Carruth among the wide receivers leading with 44 yards. Savoy with a touchdown. The defensive leaders, Williams had six tackles, Farley had one ta uh, five tackles and the one interception. Four wideouts now. And they've got the tight ends outside, the wide receivers inside, run it with Herschel Troutman. And he gets a pretty good pot right at the line of scrimmage from Christian Peter. So this is the play. Now let me kind of try to explain this to you. You've got the wide receivers lined up basically where the tight ends used to be, and the tight ends are outside where the wide receivers are. Well, you got four wide, so you got slots on both sides, and usually the wide receivers are outside. So New Eyes will say, we're going to put them inside put the tight ends on the outside, and that will force the corners to make a decision. Are you going to stay outside and cover tight ends or inside? And that time they stayed outside on the tight ends. So they go back, come inside to Phil Savoy. He'd have been better off if he'd run down the middle of the field with it. But he still puts it over on the 49-yard line of Nebraska. Here's what we mean, Keith. Here's a tight end here. This one right here is a wide receiver. Over here is the same way. This is a wide receiver. Now, what they try to do is get mismatches on the, the wide receivers in the slot. And that's what you get right there. Trotman and Miller in the backfield now. It's third down. And two. Troutman going for the first down, dragged down short of the line of scrimmage by Doug Coleman. So they'll be looking at fourth down, and we're off to talk to John Hunters. Keith, Nebraska has been extremely impressive today, but the team right behind them in the polls just as impressive. Danny Werfel to Redell Anthony for the touchdown, 39 yards for Werfel. His fifth touchdown pass of the day, 35-3. Keith. They do know how to throw the ball, and Neuheisel was down at Florida learning from him. Fourth down right here. Fourth and three, and they're going. It's closer to three than two. One big, two. It's James Kitt. He's got it. He's loose. He scores. That's fourth and one. You get man coverage out here. It's a gutsy call by Rick Neuheisel. A perfect throw by Hessler. This is a big time chance. And we said early on, if Colorado had a chance, the wide receivers had to make some big plays. Oscar Richium, the point is good. And so the whole hum turns into a holy cow. It's 31-21. You know, we just went to New York for that update on Florida. And I said that Neuheisel had been down to Florida in the spring to kind of see how Steve Spurrier handles things. This is something that Spurrier would have called. This is something that Neuheisel called, and Hessler put it right on the money. Oh, yeah, I'm a Grand Prix kind of guy. I just hate it when we have to hurt. They list James Kidd at 5'8", 160. He's probably an inch less than that, but I'll tell you what he can do. He can run, and he can catch him. And he just did. That was a big play, Keith. That was fourth and one on the 50-yard line. If they miss that, Nebraska gets the ball on the 50 going downhill. That was a key play for a young head coach. 
Brad Leslie kicks it off. Barefoot one. Knocks it back three yards into the end zone. He'll come out with it. It's Clinton Childs. And they take him down at the 11. So the Buffaloes are mile high right now. Here Isles got him. We talked about what Colorado needed to do offensively. Needed big plays from their wide receivers, and they're getting it. Eight receptions, 96 yards. Now they have two touchdowns. Defensively holding Nebraska under 250 yards. They're doing that. Only 111, but Tommy Frazier is hurting him with the pass over 180 yards in the first half. This is the poorest starting point of a possession for Nebraska. Officially, they'll call it the 12 because it's beyond the 11. They run Amon Green inside up to the 15. Wisconsin came back today and put one on Michigan State. And Baylor. Ice Cube Warriors. From the 15, it is second down. Short seven. There's your option. They got the quarterback early, forced the pitch early, and they got Amon Green, and he picks up two yards, and here's 20. Thank you, Keith. This is Corey Detmer, who went out after the injury against Texas A&M. How are you feeling right now after the operation? I'm feeling real good. You know, the surgery went real well, and uh, they've got me on a real aggressive rehabilitation program, and so everything's going real good right now. You were talking to John Hess on the sideline, Rick Neuheitz at halftime. What's that conversation about? Well, just tell him to relax, and it's going to be a long game, and to go out there and just do the best he can. And he's come out the second half, and really made a big play here early on. So, uh, you know, he's been looking good. He's going to keep that spot warm for you. Yeah, he is. You know, uh, it's real disappointing to me, you know, not to get to play in this game. These are tough games that you dream about playing. And, uh, you know, hopefully next year it'll work out where I'll get to get in this game. I suppose that had you stayed healthy and had a great season, people would have asked you whether you'd be back for your senior year. Would you determine to come back? Oh, yeah. You know, I would have stayed, you know, uh, with my size, you know, and, and things like that. The pro scouts, uh, you know, I, I feel like I just have to prove to them a little bit more. Well, Corey, thank you very much. Keith? All of a sudden, uh, Makovica, Jeff Makovica, has become a key personality in this thing. While uh, Swanee was talking to Coy, you saw him get out there and get lost by the defense and pick up the first down on the pass. That was his first reception of the year. Yeah. <laughs> Now you got penalty flags after that last uh, carry by the fullback. So the Nebraska fullback, yeah, they quiet for a long time, the blocking back, and then all of a sudden, boom, here they come, and the penalty is against Colorado. Now, did I say Colorado? Uh, uh, yeah, you're right. They're talking Colorado. They're going to take it back to the point of the foul and then come back this way. Tommy Frazier saying, yeah, we want that penalty. We'll take it. Tommy Frazier just throwing, what's he, 214 yards now passing. That's a yep. career high. Usually beat you with his feet, but he can beat you with his arm. And that 15-yard penalty will put the football up at the 44-yard mark. Six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. 31-21, Nebraska. Defense changing around. They go the other way with it. And trying to get Green out there one-on-one, -on -one, but he can't get away. Number three, Donnell Liam Mitty. Liam Mitty, great tackle. Had him in what amount of the open field and yeah. took him down. One-on-one, -on -one. that's exactly right. And there was nobody else if Liam Mitty doesn't tackle him. When you play an option team, Keith, like Nebraska, the safeties of your defense, Liamidi and Rosga, better be up there in, in tackles. Probably going to be your leading tackles because they're going to make a lot of plays. Second down and eight. Frazier turns around, looks for somebody, and he finally finds the tight end, Mark Gilman. And Gilman will have a first down for the Cornhuskers at the 44-yard line of Colorado. Now, A.J. Kristoff's troops are getting the heat put on them. They, Frazier just looks like he's toying with them. They're 
Smith just a yard short of him all the time, it seems. You know, Frazier seems to make the right plays and the right calls all the time. We mentioned earlier, he's a four-year starter. He has played, he knows this system inside and out. Clinton Childs is in the backfield. Quarterback throw here. And to pick up a close to four yards. Monday night action night on ABC. Jeff and Eric used to be. Yeah. Although it isn't quite so much so anymore, is it? Fred Jones. Some bruises. Up. Some bruises on him as he goes out. Yep. Quite a good game. It is second down. And close to six. Here goes Childs. That's another one of those Omaha tailbacks. And he runs for a first down at the 25-yard line. And they're running inside and ever since they came out at halftime. The word is everything is stacked to stop the option on the outside. And they've been running uh, Makovica and Childs and Green, the tailbacks, up inside and doing a lot of uh, good yardage inside instead of outside with the option. Colorado's got to gamble some now on the defense. We've got to guess a little. See that Fabro, who's lined up as a wingback, comes around that corner and threw a whale of a block over there. The uh, fullback, Makovica, had been taken down. Big eight scores today. Iowa State bouncing back for the win. Missouri gave Oklahoma all they wanted. I mean, that's a real fist fight down there in the middle, isn't it? I mean, they are really some big people slapping each other around. And Liam Eady's hurt, too. He went right to the ground. So while they take time for the injured Donnell Liam Eady, we can tell you it is a stadium record crowd today at Folsom Field. As you see, 54,063. So Liam Mitty, who is a sturdy horse in that secondary, the strong safety, and he's hurt. We got a timeout. CFA College Football on ABC Sports, brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement. And Cannon, who reminds you there is so much more you can do with a new kick to the sidelines, and it looks like he does have what Bob called a stinger in the shoulder. Eight tackles, all solos, as he left the game. This is the tenth play of this Nebraska possession. Frazier turns it back into the middle on third down at a yard and will have the first down. He's down to the 14, and that's plenty. Good teams come back and answer touchdowns by your opposition, and that's what Nebraska is doing. Left shoulder swing stinger, and he's back. You can rub those things out sometimes rather quickly. 31-21 ball game, and the Huskers are down knocking on the door at the Colorado 14-yard line. Frazier gives the option. The ball gets away from Clinton Childs, and he is taken down back at the 19. Ryan Black, who plays in that nickel position. Well, the rover back position is what it amounts to, and when Liam Minnie went out of the ball game, Mike Phillips came in as a former linebacker or plays a weak side linebacker, and there have been instances in the game today where he has gone to that rover spot. That's filling a spot down the middle so that big old Nebraska tight end doesn't have a field day like he did last year. Second down and 15. Back at the 19. Frazier looking around. Let's it go. And as Bedrill looked back, Frazier had thrown the ball and they, they don't hook him. Timing was bad because there was good coverage when he wanted to throw it. The coverage was there. 
That ball went right straight at T.J. Cunningham, who's played a pretty good game today. They, a and M, we were here the last time, kind of picked on T.J., but uh -huh. Nebraska's left him alone pretty much. Kansas picked on him a little. T.J. was used to be a wide receiver. He's covering ball, a wide receiver. Third and 15. Pass is drilled incomplete. It was intended for Brendan Holdine, and he had double coverage by the time Frazier put the ball down there. And I mean, he had some sauce on that thing. Yes, he did. If anything, he has a tendency to throw it too hard sometimes, but that ball was on target. Good coverage. So your kicking team is on the field now with Chris Brown, the place kicker, at 2.05 to play in the third quarter. This is a big field goal here. If they can get some points out of this drive, be a plus. It's 36-yard try. Uh, plenty of leg. Don't ever worry about that. And it's good. So it is now 34-21, Nebraska at 2.01 to go, quarter number three. For years. Chris Brown will kick it off now in a 34-21 ball game. And that's on its way to Longman. Here is John Saunders with some news out of Seattle. Okay. Here come the Buffaloes, down by 13. 2-0-1 to play third quarter. The ball is on the 20. And it's Lyndon Henry for a yard, and that's all. The, Chris, uh, the uh, Peter bro Peter's brothers are Christian and Jason in the middle. Grant Wistrom and Jared Tomich are the defensive ends. The linebacking core for the Cornhuskers, Farley, Coleman, and uh, Foreman, 43, 46, and 56. And uh, those linebackers have been stacking wood all day. Ooh, two Christian brothers. No, Peter brothers, Christian <laughs> Peter and Jason <laughs> Peter. The huge ones in, inside, yeah. <laughs> and a couple of yards out to about the 23 by Lyndon Henry. He's a sophomore out of Port Arthur, Texas. ABC. Well, thank you, ma'am. Is that a lady buffalo? I don't know. Second down. And call it six. And here we go with the fourth quarter of play. Nebraska owns the lead by 13. They own the football. Run it with Amon Green for the line of scrimmage. And he'll get a half a yard or so. It'll be third down and at least five, maybe a little more. Take a look at the numbers after three quarters, and the thing interesting to me, Nebraska total yards of 404, but look at the passing yards, 223 yards passing for Nebraska through three quarters. They only average 158 because the Colorado is shutting down the run in pretty nice fashion. Third down. Shotgun. Good play by number 23, Alan Wilbon. And Frazier down. No, Green hurt. Sarah Amon Green who's shaken up on the play. He had an ankle injury earlier in the week. Frazier, that was a, a pitch back, not forward. So it's not a forward pass forward. He has 223 passing yards in the game as they work on him on green. Like he just got hit in the thigh, Keith, uh, above his knee. He was off the ground, so there's no structural damage to the knee. No. Yeah, I think it was just a, a bruise to the upper, the, uh, just above the knee on the right side. See, he's off, he's off the ground right now when he yeah, gets helmet, hit. Helmet hit him just above the knee. Yeah. Nebraska has never had, never had, according to Dave Burns, and I'm putting it on him, a 300-yard passing game in 106 years of football. It tells you a little bit about their tradition. 
Jesse Cush in to put it. Gets it up. Uh, Doug Coleman. John Hessler took a wicked hit right in the back. As he tried to deliver the ball, he's walking very slowly off the field. And Nebraska's in the catbird seat. Well, we talked about getting pressure from that defensive line. I think this is the first time they're going to knock the ball loose. That um, from the right side over there, Wistrom. It might be Wistrom. Looked like it. I think it was. Can't see his number, but it looked like Wistrom. Yeah, 98 is yep, Wistrom right it. there. Does a nice job, and we talked early on. The defensive ends against the offensive tackles were a little bit of a mismatch. The pressure coming from there. Childs goes in motion, and Frazier wanting to run that quarterback draw will do so and pick up about two yards. Darrell Price was the man that brought him down for Colorado. So the Buffaloes turn it over again, and they've got themselves in a fix. Well, that was just a big play by by uh, Thomas. That's, I mean, Worcester. The youngins got three TD passes today. Dead. You talking about the kid? Yeah. Oh. Playing for the little brown joke. Yes, sir. I'm doing all right. This is Clinton Child skipping and driving down to the 15-yard line. And here's Swanee. Keith, I'm on green. I'm being told has a bruised knee. Now, he had one protective sleeve on that right knee. He went in and got another sleeve and pulled it over his shoe. Uh, so they anticipate him going back in the ballgame, but it's a bruised right knee, Keith. The 17 of 97 and two touchdowns so far running the ball. Well, any kind of a score would help Nebraska. To, they're up by 13, and at least a field goal put him up by 16. So... Frazier caught behind the line of scrimmage and is going to go down back around the 22-yard line. Matt Russell and Ryan Black rip that defensive charge. Yeah, this, this is not a bad defense that, that Colorado has either. We talked about him playing that rover back. Nine guys up near the line of scrimmage. A.J. Kristoff, here's the... Here is the fifth defensive back, and he scrapes one way or the other. No matter wherever he goes, wherever the option goes, that's where that's a play that time. Leamidi, Leamidi got in there first, and then Black, number six, Chris Brown from 37 yards for a field goal try. That's strong there. He's pretty good. That is strong. He's had three, 25, 36, 37, and that makes it a 16-point lead for Nebraska at 37 to 21. So that turnover turns into three points, and now Colorado's down by 16 rather than just down by 13. Here's a look at the top 25 and how they're doing. Kansas lost. Northwestern won at, at Illinois. Oregon's having some trouble today, too. They play in California. They play Washington next week. Auburn plays later. Who they got? Ar Arkansas? Yep. That's a big game in the SEC. Yeah. And it's in I, it's in Fayetteville, I believe. It's in, at, at Arkansas. Yeah, that's, that's a battle for the SEC West Championship, isn't it? Or close to it. Yeah. Might be Little Rock, yeah. That's a difference, too, because Little Rock, they would uh, they'd be playing on the rugby. At least it was a rug there the last time. Oregon's playing Arizona State. And uh, again, uh, they play uh, on their losing day, as you at this particular point in time. A tough year for Bruce Schneider and his Sun Devils. So that Auburn Arkansas game is in Little Rock tonight. Big ball game. Low line drive that is fielded at the one yard line by Lyndon Henry and he comes back to about the 19. So Nebraska's coverage continues to be very good on kickoffs. McFarland doing a nice job on that kickoff return. Uh, here's a look at the uh, Huskers 186 straight when they've scored 35 points or more. They lead this one 37 21. Well, their football history is becoming one of the most remarkable in the history of the game. There's no question about it. So
So Nebraska leading 37-21 with 11.44 to play in the fourth quarter in Colorado with a possession starting at their own 19-yard line as Herschel Trotman moves it out near the 23. That, uh, Nebraska jumped to the lead, scored first on a 57-yard run by Green. They scored last in the first half, and uh, they lead rather comfortably now by 16 points, having just added a field goal. Rick Neuheisel, with the sun shining in his eyes now, watched his quarterback, Hessler, get hit from the back by Wistrom a moment ago and had a pass intercepted. That opened the way for that Nebraska field goal. 16 points is a lot different than 13. Ball is drilled low. And the pass is caught. Darren Shiverini makes the catch for the Buffaloes. And uh, John Hessler took a shot again. <laughs> yeah, talk about being drilled. He said he drilled it low. Hessler got drilled. The, 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 one, of the, one of the stories was uh, Nebraska putting some pressure on Hessler. He takes a little extra time. Luther Harden. That's, that's being drilled right there. That's a mismatch, boy. <laughs> yeah. Let's say. First down, though. Back he goes again. Plucky kid throwing to Savoy. Caught it for a first down out of the 43-yard line. Tyrone Williams made the tackle. And so all of a sudden, the Buffaloes, who have been out of sync for the last seven or eight minutes, suddenly find something again. Well, this is what he's looking at right here. Look at all this space out here, the wide open space. It's just one on one. If he can get this ball to his receiver and, and get it there on a good, and, and he breaks a tackle, there's a lot of room to run to the wide side of the field. This is Lyndon Henry hammering over the left side for three yards. Hessler in the game, 15 of 32, 211 yards, a couple of touchdowns, but two interceptions. Nebraska defense came in with 25 sacks on the year and they had nine last week so uh, the Peter brothers and Coleman and Tomish and Wistrom and Williams this is a pretty good defense right here second down and six for the Buffaloes is underthrown for Savoy. He had two receivers and three defenders over on the near sideline. This is the first time that we've seen Nebraska up close and personal since last year. And since last year, and, and this is a very good football. Game. And they lost, Keith, they lost 14 starters, seven on offense and seven on defense, plus their kicker. Tom Osborne's group doesn't seem like they've lost a bit. They still have that quick defense. This punch can play with him. Oh, yes. That pass is complete, and that should be enough for a first down. He was well beyond the marker when he made the catch down inside the 46-yard uh, line. Chris Anderson, who is the bigger target of all the wide receivers at 6'4", 220, and there's a penalty flag. So let's hold on a second before we move the change. Ineligible man was down feet. That's illegal substitution, isn't it? Or illegal substitution. He just, right just left. I think it's illegal man. Ineligible downfield yep. on the offense. Repeat third down. Yep. Wrong man took off. Michigan opening up the Minnesota game now at 45 to 10. Nine minutes and 35 seconds in the clock running. 37-21, Nebraska leads. Number two, Nebraska, playing number seven, Colorado. Kansas State thrashed Kansas today, 41-7. To the Jayhawks' first loss. The penalty makes it third down, 11 for Colorado. Oh, they hurt themselves again with another penalty. Oh, they've had a lot. That's a great play there by Grant Wistrom. The sophomore from Webb City. And here's John. Well, Keith, you'll be... <laughs> the big uh, Chicago convention. Chicago run was some <laughs> kind of convention. Yeah. Terrell Farley was bouncing around up there at the top of the picture. And the Colorado man at, on that side of the field, T.J. Cunningham, backed up. 
Yeah. And uh, Farley intimidates him out of five yards. Well, here's the reason, because Colorado's had four punts blocked, and Farley has blocked two this year, and in junior college, where he was the last two years, he blocked 22 kicks in those two years in junior college. So he's got 24 blocks in the last two and a half years. He's still up there at the top. No, he's come down inside a little bit now. He's one man down and working his way down the middle, but the kick is out there safely. And it's at the 25-yard line for Damon Finney. And he takes a little bit of whacking and cracking as he goes down at about the 26-yard line after a 43-yard punt. 8.20 to play in the ball game. 37-21, Nebraska. That penalty that uh, Colorado had a moment ago was their ninth penalty in the ball game and the 78th penalty of the season. That's too many. Clinton Childs is the tailback. He's got the ball and he goes down, not quite at the line of scrimmage, so he lost a bit on that play. The man leading it was Clifton Peters. Oh, he is Peters plural, not Peter. Uh, not of the New Jersey people. <laughs> not of the Nebraska people. Second down, 12. That goal is way wide down at the bottom of the picture, going back toward the ball now. Frazier hands it, no, keeps it, throws it, got a man, open. Pass is caught by Mark Gilman, the tight end. And that's a first down for the Conhuskers up at the 43. And we go back to John for an update on that Washington-USC game. For the Rose Bowl right there, huh? Sure could. There's another team lurking in the shadows, though. Oregon's still in it. Yes, they are. So is UCLA. First down, Frazier hands it off to Childs, bumps into uh, big number 70 who had dropped back to block Eric Anderson. Eric's a mere 6'4", 300, so it took him a minute to run around him, and by then the defenders were there. Billy Mayfair will finish it for you tomorrow at 3 here on ABC Sports. I bet none of them boys shot their A's like you did, Hoss. <laughs> oh, I'm glad that happened. I ain't gonna listen. I have to listen to that anymore. <laughs> Whining and moaning and groaning. Well, it's, it's important. I know it is. <laughs> Clinton Childs bumping and grinding gets up to about the 45, and I'm sure you saw the laundry flying around, so we've got a penalty coming up. If the score does not change, or if the Cornhuskers take it down for more, that's offsides against Colorado, you know that there will be slings and arrows. And one knows also that Rick Neuheisel knows, and so I asked him yesterday in conversation if he was pretty sure that his hide was thick enough for what may be coming. And he said? Well, I hope so. <laughs> it's all the hide we got. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good attitude. He is young and he is bright. He does have some things to learn. He is the second youngest. Division one coach, Ron Cooper, is, uh, four days early, younger. Keith, I think one of the things that that is that, that is missing in this Buff team is the players have to be a little bit more disciplined. And I think that is where all the penalties come from. Yep. I think, I think there needs to be a little bit more discipline in the program. Notre Dame trying to put Boston College down, but not without a fight. Second down and nine. Frazier has missed in the backfield and turns up field and he's it was a shovel right pass. Out of first yeah, that was supposed to be a shovel pass and uh, Frazier said, well, what the heck? It ain't going to work. I'll just take it. You know, people say, well, you know, what makes Frazier so good? Well, He's been around for four years in the same system, so he knows the offense and he's experienced. He's a great athlete. This offense is perfect for his talents. He was the top option quarterback coming out of high school. He is the top, or at least one of the top, option quarterbacks right now. He has overcome adversity last year with the blood clots and all that other stuff. He is very confident at this time. He's a leader, and he is smart. He puts you in the right play at the line of scrimmage so there's no dead plays. There's contact in the middle of the line as number 94 popped out of there, Kerry Hicks. So it's always the wait to see if somebody moved or Hicks jumped. 
Frazier, of course, is from Palmetto, Florida. So he's one of those Floridians that left home to play. Permits trip to car rental post game report scores and highlights for you around the country. Game was slowed down for a moment here. The pace of it has. Well, Keith, there's a new rule this year. Watch the defensive man on the left, Hicks. Watch him move. He jumps in, and when if if the defensive man jumps in and causes the offensive man to move, it's on the defense. And Ott, the uh, guard, Steve Ott, is the man right over him that moved. There's a look at the penalties. Nebraska is clean. 78 yards of field position that Colorado has given up. They're hooting and hollering because they're moving people back on the Colorado sideline. Now they've accomplished it. That's the guard 69 odd in that survey of team players. He was voted most likely to eventually be a millionaire because he has his own stock account. This is anything like that. They ain't going anywhere. <laughs> uh, They're calling that play right about the line of scrimmage. Referee Terry Turlington. Timeout, Colorado. At four minutes and 48 seconds to play in the game, and the Cornhuskers seemingly have it in hand. <laughs> Their advisory, there is a winter storm watch in effect for the entire area today. Seems like... F.A. College Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks. The most dependable, longest-lasting trucks back in on your bicycle on a sunny day and go downhill. From the 44-yard line, it is second down and 10 plus. Option, pitch back to Childs. But Childs keeps working his way to the sidelines and finally is run out of bounds. Down at the 39-yard line, but he picked up five yards, and he just kept feeling his way up the field. So we have a circumstance of number one being idle to ensure their continued posture there, Florida State. Florida State doesn't really have a, a test in front of them until they go on the road to Virginia and then finish the season at Gainesville. And... Uh, the team that still catches my eye is Ohio State because of Washington, Notre Dame, Penn State, Wisconsin in a row. And they scored 56 today against Iowa. Tougher schedule. Tougher schedule, is right. That pass is thrown way over the head of Sheldon Jackson. Incomplete. Well, we said early on for Nebraska, offensively, Tommy Frazier had to have one of his normal days. And... He's uh, passed for a lot more yardage than normal, 241 yards and two touchdowns, and really ran the show. Hasn't had any fumbles. Defensively, they needed to pressure the quarterback, and they've done that. They've had eight hurries, a couple of sacks, and they've picked off two, so it's been another successful day for Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator, and Tom Osborne and his staff, which is one of the top staffs in the country, I might add. Pressure. As your old penalty, he came flying in trying to block the punt and he hit the kicker. And number 37, Marcus Washington. A free safety. He is going to go walking slowly and uh, ruefully to the sidelines while the ball is restored to Nebraska's possession. But I think is this Nebraska team, this really is kind of the start of their, the, the heavyweight portion of their schedule, and they've handled it pretty well. Then they've got Kansas on the road at Lawrence, and then they play Oklahoma. So right at this point in time, it's kind of hard not to think they're not going to win it out. Watch as he's trying to make something happen. He's going to slide into him. He tries to dive at him, and that could be a serious injury there. Fortunately, it wasn't, but... When you take that dive and leave your feet, it's not where the punter was, it's where he's going to be, and you gotta be out in front of him. And so the penalty moves the football to the 24. 
And it's a first down. 37-21 Nebraska with 4.30 to play in the game. And Clinton Childs getting a lot of work today. Slips and slides and wiggles and squirms and picks up about five yards. You talk about Nebraska losing a lot of players from last year's team. Uh, Colorado lost a lot also. They lost eight, uh, eight players that went to the NFL draft, and they had uh, three of them that were on their offense. Uh, remember Russ Cordell Stewart and Sean Salam was first round draft choice and Michael Westbrook uh, all three of them so a lot of players uh, go into the pros from these two programs inside four minutes now blitz coming doesn't work up the middle goes Childs Childs runs into Rosga and Rosga takes him down at the 10 yard line Well, Colorado coming into the game needed some big plays from their wide receivers. They got some. They got 12 reception and 173 yards and a couple touchdowns. And as a matter of fact, that was with the first two touchdowns in eight years. Touchdown passes against uh, Nebraska. And hold them under 250. They did that, but they gave up a lot of passing yards to Tommy Frazier, and that was the difference. First and 10 at the 10. if it's goal or not. I can't see the ball. It's pretty close to being that. Gain of five yards by Clinton Childs, and that'll take him down to the five, and yes, it is. Second down and goal from the five. You see Tommy Frazier checking off at the line of scrimmage, and that is one of the, the hidden values, the hidden secrets to this team, because when you can check off at the line, you can always get your option team in the best play. The crowd has grown quiet. Nebraska knocking on the door. Again, second down and goal from the five-yard line. Three minutes and three seconds. It's Clinton Childs lined up in the deep back. Makovic at the fullback. And it's Childs. His second spin was worth three yards. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Jack O'Hara, coordinating producer of today's game and uh, producer of today's game, Bob Goodrich. Our associate coordinating producer is James Ressler. Our game here in Boulder was directed by Drew Esikoff, who also directed lunch. <laughs> and a, and a no darn blame. good one. No and Drew, you ought to do it every week. And we think that you should be elected to that. Yes, sir. Make you a vice president. Ball is on the two-yard line for the Cornhuskers, and they're over here at the side having a visit. College football today, directed by Calvin Haywood and produced by Charles Kuplin. College football today, TD, Gary Boyarski, and our... Um... Boy, what is this? Technical director for us here in Boulder, Gary Larkins, New York remote coordinator, David Kiviat, Bruce Clark, our associate director, production manager, Lynn Catton, our tech ops manager, Stefan Petrat. Our telecommunications manager, Jim Lakata. Our assistants to the producer. Well, I don't know if I want to tell you who they are or not. Bob O'Mara and <laughs> Roger Wilson. <laughs> Statistician, Dave Bernson. Spotter, Todd Barry. Our computer stats, Mark Amento, who's also from Omaha. And our sideline coordinator, Matt Panagiotis. That's not him there. And that fellow looks familiar, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Big John went to school with his daddy Jack at Washington State University. Third down and two for the Huskers. Third and goal from the two. Frazier turns in the end zone. He's a tough man, Mr. Frazier. We've been talking all day about the offensive line. Look over here. These guys are going to come in and seal. And Frazier's just going to come right up in here. The right side, that's Ott, the 69. 70, the tackle. Working together is Anderson. Gilman, the tight end. 77 is uh, true. This, it is the timing. They all can move their feet. And that is key for offensive linemen. 
So with 2.46 to play in the game, it is now 44 Nebraska and 21 Colorado. And here's what's shaken with the top 25 folks around the country as there have been some surprises and some narrow escapes. But the top-ranked teams didn't have much trouble today. Tennessee scoring big. There's the big surprise right there. Yeah. Kansas State whacking Kansas that much, 41 to 7. Northwestern just getting past Illinois. And Michigan will run it up now, 52 to 10. Oregon is leading by three against Arizona State, fighting to stay alive in the Pac-10 Rose Bowl chase in a big ball game in the Southeastern Conference tonight. Auburn and Arkansas in Little Rock. Washington uh, leading by seven over USC. Trojans on the verge of losing their second successive game. One thing that hurts about that one is that's a conference game. Yep. Washington, incidentally, doesn't have a conference loss. All right, Nebraska will kick it off. Chris Brown will hammer it. And it's Herschel Troutman backing up, fumbling it. Ball come out? No, it did not come out. It'll be a touchback. Marlon Barnes covered it. But that'll take your breath away to have that happen. They've been, they've been working against this all week, the Colorado defense. They knew the option was coming. They're going to come out and run it. You know it's coming, and you can't do anything about it. That set the tone for the day. Buffaloes uh, fought back. And we're in the hunt for a time, but... Uh, you see USC now has come back to tie 21-21 so Colorado trying to get a little respect here as they fight back and move that football with Ray Carruth carrying it up to the 35 yard line and getting a first down two and a half minutes to play you can put one in the end zone and then some especially with this kind of speed so USC goes for the tie against Washington 21, 20. Yeah, I, I don't know. John Robinson may know something that uh, maybe a tie is... I won't hurt you as much as a loss in that particular country. Maybe a better record, yeah. yeah. Probably it goes back to a better record. Better overall record. Yeah. Tom Osborne, boy, what a great career he's had, huh, Keith? Not bad. It's his 23rd year as head coach, his 34th year at Nebraska. He was the co National Coach of the Year last year, and every one of those 23 years, he's had at least nine wins. The amazing thing, though, is he's never lost more than three. Hessler's pass is completed to Phil Savoy, trying to split the defenders and get the first down. Can't quite do it. There's one thing about Dr. Tom, and he does have a Ph.D. in educational psychology. And he makes up his mind after he assessed the circumstances and the facts. Leave him alone, because you ain't gonna change uh, it. He's a, he, he's a quality class individual. And when he makes decisions on personnel, on anything else, you gotta go along with what he's doing, because he knows the situation a heck of a lot better than we know it or anybody else around America. Ball is out of bounds at midfield, good for a first down. Ray Carruth moved the change. He got a minute and 54 to play in the game. And Still bright, warm, sunny day in Boulder, Colorado. The Buffs have a chance now to run out the season at 9-2. and two, And that'll give them a pretty respectable place to go over the holidays, I would think. Almost picked off. Almost picked off. By Warfield. Eric Warfield. Yeah. Here's a look at Nebraska. Next week they go, uh, they have Iowa State at home, then they go to Kansas and finish with Oklahoma. So, Mr. Bowden, you might want to start uh, greasing your cannon because there's some folks out in the plains waiting for you. 
That pass down the middle is complete to Carruth. And it's a big game down to the 23, 24 yard line of Nebraska. <laughs> What do you, you know, Florida's sitting home watching, you know, they're, they're, they're greasing the cannon, I know. <laughs> but uh, there ain't no way that Nebraska should move ahead of Florida State just because they, they have a big win here and you know, Florida State's not, not uh, a no, bowl don't change. No, you don't do that. You, don't, you shouldn't do that. But, uh, well, the dangerous thing they've got to avoid here is getting themselves wrapped up in the postseason stuff because of all the hype and Yahoo that goes with it. And forget about a Kansas or a Oklahoma or Iowa State. Yeah. Because there was a time when they were sitting up there in the Gatbird seat, went down to Ames and got themselves whipped. There was a time when Kansas was, a, was an easy pick on the schedule. Garuth is out of bounds. That's an incomplete forward pass. It's a great effort, though, on his part. So the Huskies and uh, the Trojans play to a 21-21 tie. Well, it's a sister kisser, but probably a pretty one. If it gets uh, USC, uh, John Robinson into the Rose Bowl, they'll it's look back one. on it and they'll say that was a good decision. It's a pretty one, yep. yeah. Well, of course, the same applies for Lambright. You've been around a long time there, boss. Let me ask you a question. Let me I'll ask you a question. Where did that phrase, a tie is like kissing your sister, come from? Uh, I heard it once upon a time, and I thought it was pretty good, and other people did too, and they've been using it forever. Genuine Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Tommy Frazier of Nebraska, 241 yards passing, 40 running, three touchdowns. Donnell Leometti for Colorado, 13 tackles for the Buffaloes. Played a good tough ball game. He's a good player. In celebrating its 25th year of NCAA sponsorship, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for academic achievements and assist those in financial need. Mass across the field, the field is off because of the Savoy. And I'm concerned for his health. There's he got a headache. Four, <laughs> four Huskers hit him. Yeah, he got a headache right there. Yeah, uh, you know, when you get up and you start patting them on the head, you know that they hit you pretty good. <laughs> That's right. 49 seconds to play here. Let's quickly go for an update on that Seattle fight today with John. Beringer is now your quarterback. Brooke Beringer, senior from Goodland, Kansas, the man who played such a major role in the Cornhuskers' march to a championship last year when Tommy Frazier went down. Wouldn't have been there without this man right here. No, sir. Everybody getting a chance to get on the field now and get a taste of it. As the substitutions are continuing, a group goes out, take one snap, come back, another group goes out. They brought 79 on the trip today. And running hard up the middle is Joel McEvick, the younger of the brothers from Brainerd, Nebraska. And he picks up the first down. And the folks starting to move out onto the field now as the clock is rolling. They're going to let it run, too, because the issue has been resolved. There is no question about who's going to win the ball game, and they might as well let it go on and finish. And your final score, Nebraska 44 and Colorado 21. And this is the way it looks in the Big 8 at the conclusion of this game. Nebraska stays on top. Kansas State jumps back up there with Kansas after beating them today. Colorado, however, has sustained a second loss and now at 2-2. Your final score, as we told you, 44-21. Nebraska remains undefeated and almost surely number two in the country. Coming up on ABC's Monday Night Football, next Monday, the Bears and the Vikings.